Welcome back to Speedway Crazy Show, and this is episode uh, two. And tonight we will have uh, with us uh, Peter Young from uh, Sweden. And of course, we will have uh, Kuba, and you are there already, Kuba. So, uh, how are you? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. Yeah, how's your English learning going? Uh, a little bit, it's better. It's better, yeah. We yeah, forced. I think so. So, we are kind of forcing you to learn uh, English here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Polish English student, yeah? yeah Correct? Yeah, of course. Yeah. So, how have you been doing? How's this week gone for you? A lot of work? Yeah, I work uh, for my English. Yeah? I uh, wear the suit. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You're like uh, Steve Jobs Jr. of the Polish <laughs> yeah. version, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I'm like Darth Vader. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, 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 zoom. <laughs> so we got our hobbies anyway. Yeah. So English skills is good. Who's your guest tonight? Uh, today my guest is uh, Patrick Hansen. Ah, Patrick Hansen from Denmark. Yeah, of course. Young rider. Where does he race in Poland right now? Uh, in Ostrów. Ah, cool. Ostrów Wielkopolski. It's not so Ostrów far from. Uh, yeah. He Ostrów, you know. Yeah. Yes, I know this club is quite good club and it's good. We had our Norwegian rider Rune Holta racing there for yeah. a while. So 10 and 14 or uh, 15. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but it's a good stuff down there. It's, it's, it's yeah. a cool club. I like the people down in Ostrów Wielkopolski. I've been there a lot, so it's quite nice. <laughs> so. We will watch your reportage in the end of this uh, segment today, uh, or in, in the end of this episode. Uh, and then we will have you back live next week and see what more insane stuff you will bring for us. Okay? Okay. Enjoy your evening. Bye. Bye. So, we will have a little bit uh, commercial Ooh. right now, and we will get a hold of uh, P.D. Young quite soon. Get your favorite rider in a Speedway Canvas today. Buy them at speedwaycanvas.com. And there we already have uh, Peter Young with us somewhere inside this uh, loop bubble. There we have you, guy. Hi, how are Hi. you? I'm good, buddy. Thanks. How are you? Maybe I should speak uh, English like uh, Swedish people do. <laughs> oh, you can't do it because you can't talk, take Norway out of a Norwegian. <laughs> <laughs> Even listen to the cross country skiers and you can tell where they are from after like one second. You can only go to our former uh, Prime Minister of Norway, which is the uh, General Secretary of NATO right now. I'm a little bit embarrassed by listening to his English <laughs> pronunciations. Uh, yeah. But he's a top politician, so he get money for talking. Nonsense. Nice one. Well, as long as you understand what other people say, it's fine, I guess. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, how's your season been? Like 2020 season, it was an upside down season. Everything happened in Poland for change. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, was unbelievable, and I guess it's uh, I guess the same for everyone. I mean, uh, the season was was really difficult for everyone, and. Uh, we uh, we just tried the best we could with the with the circumstances as it was, but uh, it wasn't a great one. And now I guess it wasn't a great one for for any rider or any club actually or the fans. So we just tried to put a put it behind us and look forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were a speedway Grand Prix rider before. Is it dreams to go back to the Grand Prix? Well, you know, it's it's it's. I guess I guess the the dream is always going to be there in a way. But then, uh, together with that, I need to say that you got to be on the level. And I I was re a little bit short of the level when I was there. And and if I could just you know step my game up one one step, then I I would uh, I would be able to perform there. But it's it's really tough and it's a really high level, and you really need to need to be on your top game if you should have any say in it. So, you know, if I can take another step up, why not? If I can't, then I got nothing to do there. So, 
but the Speedway of Nations is like this pair racing now. Um, what was the result of the uh, Swedish uh, riders? For e everyone which is not Speedway people watching this, they would like to know what what were the results for the su Swedish team last year. Uh, well, last year I can't nearly close to uh, close to not even remember because it was in Lublin and it was pissing down with rain and the track was terrible and. Uh, if you ask me, the, the event should never really happen that uh, the way that the circumstances was. But uh, I can't even remember if they were fifth or sixth or seventh. I, you know, I, I sort of got fed up with even watching it after a few races. Yeah, well, there was many of us watching that. It was they were like kind of pushed in the corner, and we knew that Poland would come with new restrictions in the country that would what we will say f up uh, all the situation in in a way for all sports there so for sure and i know of, of course then you got to appreciate that they tried you know and and poland was a really really um, honorable thing they did to speedway last year and tried everything they could and we could actually run a decent season there uh, compared to nearly all other countries i mean sweden we did like eight meetings plus the playoffs but uh, but I mean, uh, Poland really pulled through, and, and and I think in the long run maybe saved the sports in in the like in Poland anyway. Um, I mean, England didn't ride, Denmark didn't ride, Germany didn't ride. So I think in the end of the day that they did it is really that's a really big thing, and I uh, I highly respect when the clubs managed to pull through last year. Yeah, and also I, I would think like Svemo in Sweden, they now see how much foreign riders means to the elite series in Sweden. You're Obviously, right. yeah, of yeah. course, it was uh, it was not the same at all. And 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 but even then, uh, Sweden was like I think the only country more that even did any any league. So I think they did the best they could with it, and and uh, we really appreciated that too. And I think. Uh, even though we couldn't really have nearly any fans on the stadium, um, but it could have been shown on TV, and we we had some great games on TV as well. So you know, in the long run, I think it was was two countries, in my opinion, that did did good. Uh, Poland did best, hundred percent, and and Pol uh, Sweden did what they could, and and we sort of appreciate that too. But it obviously. It was really tough, but I, I appreciate that Sweden even could do any meetings as the way the things were here. Yeah, but I agree with you also this this with the Poland part because I think they saved the speedway last year. That, that for was, sure. Yeah, for they, sure. They, they stepped up and it was on the top level of government even which helped this happen. You know. For yeah, us. yeah. So, I so mean, it's it's uh, the, the sport and and any any sports at all is uh, it's not only about the athletes; it's about the the fans and the sponsors and the interest and and getting young kids involved, you know. So future-wise, it's so important that that sports, all the sports, you know, football, whatever, whatever it is, be right, that they can keep going in in some way, uh, so people don't lose lose interest and sort of losing track of the sport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We we, we have many many different um, stories to tell there, especially from Norway, where, where actually motorsport was banned in the 70s, you know, so, and from one day to the other, the interest just disappeared, you know. That, yeah, that's why and so did, Speedway so did really that. doesn't exist here anymore. Exactly, yeah, yeah and, and so did a lot of the athletes. I mean, obviously, we know, like, from, from Swedish point of view, I mean, Norway is uh, huge and dominates in, in cross-country skiing and so on, and and that's the sports what probably kept on going back in that days, and and that probably even shows now uh, what's going on in the long run. If you don't look after the sports, they disappear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, of course. Ah, it's a big issue. All this uh, stuff now, with uh, especially now with this Corona issue and so on. Let's hope uh, <laughs> everyone will be well and we can race 2021 season. We are just waiting for that. This is growing inside yeah. out. What, yeah. what what are you thinking about Speedway European Championship? The qualifications there will probably run this season, or maybe it will be seeding. We don't know yet. But what do you think about that? Well, I think the plan is to run the qualifications because we got uh, we got the plan so far that uh, you know Sweden got so and so many places, and and uh, and uh, I think they also pulled through last year. I mean, you got to give them credit for that. They they managed to to run the European uh, Championship 
even with, um, I mean, obviously uh, different different opportunities than before. But they did it, and 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 we really appreciate that. So I really hope that uh, everyone will back them up and and do the qualifiers, and hopefully we can get the also also European Championship back on on track as it was. Yeah, 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 yeah. I will do that live on Eurosport and in here in Norway when that time comes. So it will be quite interesting. Yeah, for sure. Over to something else. I saw your previous sponsor, uh, MX World, the run uh, Magnus Frudi, which uh, run this uh, insanely awesome museum uh, in Sweden there. And he put out that he wanted to give away some materials this summer, I think it was. And your wife wrote to you like, Peter, go and pick up these materials because I want to have a new terrace or something at home. So I was spying at you, of course. Uh, yeah. <laughs> did you do it? <laughs> no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Uh, we, you know, <clears throat> this summer was kind of crazy for us. Then I was in Poland most of the time and so on and so on. Magnus, however, is a great guy. And uh, the, like you said, the museum is definitely worth a visit if you're interested in any motorsport. Uh, you know, motocross and speedway is huge. Uh, all the records and soul stuff and Lee Adams and Michael Max, you, you name it. Uh, most of it is got it. So that's definitely worth a visit. Uh, and the, the the guy Magnus is also worth uh, to see. He's a nice guy, very nice, nice guy. And take, look after his. his uh, <clears throat> everyone what visits the shop uh, or the the museum, great. It's, it's it it uh, looks uh, quite nice. I haven't been at this museum, but when you see the pictures from there, I'm friends with Magnus uh, on on Facebook, and uh, we had a chat now and then, but. You know, when you see the pictures from there, it's like insanely cool. It is. It is. Just and go it, there, you know. Yeah, you can't re really even give it back in pictures. It's. Uh, I know it looks really great on pictures because I'm obviously following him on social media and MX World and that. But it's, it's, it's so nice to see. I mean, it's bikes back from, you know, I can't even remember when, but it's, it's bikes back from 40s. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the world champions up to like nearly now. So it's 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 really nice and and all the bikes got his stories written up about them and if you want you can even get a guided tour with Magnus who knows everything about the bikes yeah, and yeah. who you know it's 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 definitely something you could spend a half a day easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but I see people all around the world recommend just going there, even from the states. They are just recommending people to. Are you in Scandinavia, or Europe? Go there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I don't uh, think there's anything like it, you know. With the, I, I don't think so. Um, I don't know where in that case, where you could get so much of of two huge like huge motorsports. Like for us, it's obviously speedway, but it's uh, the the main thing there is is motocross. But it's it started to pick up like quite a big piece of speedway there as well so it's uh it's it's interesting even for us which have been in in speedway for many years but it's still nice to see the stories behind the bikes and whose bikes it is and and everything is is great yeah it's a great collection there your sponsor is he's still your sponsor isn't it uh yeah yeah he's uh i got to know him a few years ago when he started with the museum more or less when he started with the motocross things and, and we got invited there to see that and, and we spent like half a day and just listening to the stories behind the bikes and the world champions uh, around like enduro and motocross and everything and he's got like their bikes and their uh their racing kit helmets goggles like everything is there from the world championship they won and so on it's uh it's one of a kind that's for sure it's when you go to Grand Prix in Molilla, then you got to go to Hultsfred and visit this museum, uh, for sure. Yeah, it's just up the road there. Yeah. On, on another subject, you know we are kind of enemies. Did you know that? Yeah, because you're Norwegian and I'm Swedish, so it's always been the same. <laughs> yeah, we got the oil and you got the bananas, Ikea or something. <laughs> was yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 We you're not even my friend on Facebook. You're not, <laughs> you, uh, uh, not even on Instagram or nothing. It's like, no, I don't want to be a friend with Henry. Why? <laughs> well, you know, you keep your uh, you should keep your enemies close, as I say. But uh, then uh, you know how it is, Sweden and Norway. We're yeah, really I know. We're really never friends. I know we will never be friends. You know, you beat us in cross-country skiing, and we beat you guys in, I mean, roughly all the other sports. 
And I what, can't even think of one you're good at, actually. Nah, but you know, we are good in economy because what we have in plus in our government bank account is what Sweden have in minus in their bank account. That's not really plus, though. <laughs> if you just drill a fucking hole and you find oil, that's you don't really need to be Einstein to find money in that fucking hole. <laughs> Did you know that the Norwegian government... They, they, they were offered from Sweden to get shares in Volvo against some shares in some oil company, Statoil, Norwegian company. Yeah. Did you know about that? No, I did, no, no. No, no, no. But I think, I, I don't remember if it was Norway that said no or Sweden that said no. But one of them managed to say no. So it never kind of happened. So. Probably Sweden because the government here is so smart financially <laughs> that I guess that they would have turned it down and they said that we will give this money to a not skiing country <laughs> and uh, give it away instead of getting something back that's all of what we are used to yeah that's what we are used to that in norway giving away everything in their way yeah so. yep yep how, how, just how, here you go yeah <laughs> how how's uh, the, the sponsor market for you uh, well, for me personally, it's been quite all right, but I um, obviously I've got to say that I've, I've got the luck that I've worked with nearly the same companies for quite a few years now and it's sort of uh, personal relation as well as sponsorship. So uh, for me, it's been it's been quite all right, but I guess it's going to be it's going to be really tough for uh, for a lot of people and a lot of clubs and, and, and that's uh, obviously depending on the Corona as well, like everything else. But um you know, plus and minus that Sweden kept stuff fairly open is that a lot of the companies is running fairly well. So I guess it's it's not going to be too much of a drama, I hope. But obviously, it's going to be noticeable for everyone. What about your future? You're running your own business or you're doing some type of business that is outside of Speedway, I understand. And you've been doing um, it for a few years. I'm doing a bit of everything, you know, whatever yeah. comes along when it uh, dep depends on how much time we got and stuff. But I, I have a bit of a side company as well. Um, so we're doing a bit of work in the, in the winter and small things during the summer. I've had, uh, now I've had a, a small business with CX80, which is a Polish company, which we start to inter introduce in Sweden with the, they've done the antibacterial stuff, which has been the, like the main thing now, but uh, obviously doing lubrications and, and brake cleaners and stuff like that. So that's something we, we're working on. So we try to find, uh, you know, it um, depends on how the season was this year. Then you got to look for different things to, to spend your time on. So, so, so it will maybe end up uh, that you will have a PT Young racing brand with lubrications or something? Is that kind well, of we the never plan? Well, not really. It's not really a, a plan. I mean, uh, obviously, they. I think the uh, the company brands are normally bigger than than sort of our names, especially here in Sweden. I mean, obviously, maybe Poland is a bit different, but uh, but here it's sort of a just um, when you use something, whatever you use, and you know it's a good good product because obviously in Speedway you you see really what is good and what is bad mm -hmm. if you look at lubrications yeah, yeah. and brake cleaners and you know stuff like that then uh, then obviously you can sell it without uh, without being a sort of a salesman and sort of half lie yeah, yeah I can tell it's them. selling I can tell itself them. because it's selling itself because you, you know come it from works. a background and you, you know that you used it yourself and this is good and yep. this is not so good so exactly yeah. you know yeah. and and i mean the, the the pressure on the stuff what we are using is is really high on the the oils and everything around the bike is just really tough Absolutely. the chains the yeah, tires yeah, 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 yeah. whatever yeah so whatever we whatever i know is good then then i can sell it with a good heart and say this is the stuff you need and yeah. and, and you know you're right and this is quite important, especially for new people coming into the sport. You know, we are living in the jungle of uh, where to find, where to buy. We got a whole lot of people which sell what we will call shit stuff, which yeah. they know is shit and they're selling it anyway. Uh, and, 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 uh, and pranksters. And then you got the serious people which uh, take a little bit more, but no one wants to go to them because they... I don't know. This yeah. is like a... that's the thing, you know. It's it's like uh, going to Biltema and think that you're going to get a castor oil. Yeah. That don't happen. And Biltema and, uh, is, this, is this company which is selling cheap cheap uh, 
stuff here in the Scandinavia, you see, the Nordic yeah. countries. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, but say, but it's say working it's like in the, the daily life, like the, but, you know. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the IKEA voice, yes, more or less. Yes. You know, you can find a lot of things which is useful. You can find yeah, a lot yeah, of shit, yeah, yeah. but it's, uh, if you... Um, if you if you uh, sort of uh, pay for a Dacia, <laughs> you don't get a fucking Mercedes. You know that's I how know, it works. I know, I know, I know. Um, and you have kids. How many kids do you have? Uh, two that I know. No, yeah. I'm just joking. Two. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> two for now. We're going to get more Mormon family later. Was it like that? Yeah. No, I think we we're pretty good with two so, so far. Not eight kids. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Uh, so they're racing, aren't they? Uh, well, my daughter is uh, on um, um, show horse jumping, yeah. so she's uh, she's doing that. She's um, racing the horses, one yeah. horsepower, okay? Yeah, one yeah. horsepower. <laughs> I always tell her that, don't moan, you know, we got like 80 <laughs> and <laughs> and you got one. No, it's, uh, that's fun. I really enjoy to watch that and be a part of that because it's sort of a, a racing thing and it's so small margins. Uh, Sometimes even smaller than we working with, which is interesting to see um, how small differences it is. And uh, it takes a lot of commitment. And it's, I think they they grow up quite quick and, and learn to take responsibility. You know, if you don't feed and look after the horse for a couple of days, they it would die. sort of die. You <laughs> yeah. know, so it's uh, they got to plan their life quite qu- quickly. You know, yeah. with the schoolwork, you got to go home and do the schoolwork and get your lunch, and then you got to go to the stable and. Uh, so it's sort of, um, I think it's a, it's a grown up, a growing up, she growing up really fast with it. So I guess uh, that's a really positive thing. Yeah, I, I know quite a little bit about horses because I, I uh, actually worked nine years with horses in the, uh, one of the biggest uh, stables in the Northern Europe. And it was in my hometown here in Norway. So cool. with so over, not... over 100 horses, but of course, lots of girls. So when you are very young, that's when you, you like the girls, then you were there. So it started because of the girls and then it ended up like a job. And, you know, OK, yeah. so someone found more than oil in, in Norway. Then. Yeah, that's interesting to, <laughs> <Yeah>. to know. <laughs> OK, Peter, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thanks and a lot. Thanks lots a lot. of good luck for your uh, season and hope to see you back here soon with a little yeah, bit of update on so what's too. going on you know yeah i might accept your friend request now i was thinking about it maybe it's been like friend request for how many years like a turning on off on off on off just to get on top of everyone oh uh, maybe it's only disappeared because it's been too long yes probably something like that. okay, okay just change, change your nationality <laughs> just say it's not norwegian anymore and it might just go yes then polaco <laughs> <laughs> i am polish <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> then it's okay isn't it yeah oh yeah <laughs> i have a polish girlfriend though so oh, okay so you're 50 50 yeah. yeah i'm like 50 50 now so I, yeah cool. i need to learn some more Okay, so see you soon. Thank you. See you soon. Bye. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. 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 Take care. And that was uh, Peter Young from uh, Sweden. Swedish Peter Rider. Quite a good guy. Now we will become friends on uh, on uh, Facebook too. That's quite good. Nice. Kuba have made a reportage for us, a very short one uh, today, uh, and here we go. Here you can see what he's been doing. My today guest is uh, Patrick Hansen. Hello. Hey. How is life and how are the preparations for the new season going? Um, pretty good. Uh, still going on pretty easy. Still a little time to to start the season. We this moment just being able to training, uh, running and cycling. And now when I came back here to Poland, there was also the option coming back to the gym. So that was pretty good. Um, soon we will be going back to Denmark and building the bikes. And then, yeah, I guess it's season time. Okay. You have uh, been living in Poland uh, for some time. Uh, was it uh, difficult to adapt? to a new country mm, not that much because the previous years I've, I've been here a lot before or after a match i've been staying with my mechanic so i already knew the place quite well so 
moving to Poland was just like a thing that had to happen sooner or later. And when it did happen, it was actually in the same time when COVID started. So I had a lot of time to, yeah, get settled. In Poland, especially in Ostrów, uh, where from this season you will be a writer, uh, you are a recognizable person. Have there, there been any funny situation because of this? No, I, I don't. I wouldn't say that. Maybe last week there was one guy who recognized me, but but that's pretty much been everything. I mean, uh, you know, it's it's still the first season. I have to to race there and do well, and maybe some people will know who I am. But you know, it's not like being a big star or something. I can still go on the street and nobody knows who I am. So that's probably good enough. Uh, one thing uh, bothers uh, me the most, how did uh, the idea, hey, I will learn Polish language, it's easy, complete, come to your head. Mm, I wanted it like for, for quite a few years actually, because it's so useful here because Speedway is such a big sport here in Poland and I knew that, like I said, sooner or later I will have to live here. Um, so I thought it, it could be pretty useful to um, to know the language. Um, and when I came here and lived here all the time, then, well, people don't talk so much English here, so you automatically get to listen and speak a lot. Um, and then it just came slowly, like learning by doing. Okay, thank you for the short interview. And I wish uh, you good luck and the uh, speedway track and only spectacular uh, situation and as many points as possible. Thank you. Mike. And uh, that's what we had for you guys uh, today. And we will see you next Wednesday at uh, nine o'clock. This was Speedway Crazy Show. Bye.